Hello. My name is Rushin Paul Heller, and I am a teacher here at San Francisco Zen Center. And I've been asked to give a talk on Zen Mind, Beginner's Mind. The book, that is. Um, Rereading the book uh, recently, in the last couple of days, in preparation for this talk, I, I couldn't help but marvel at what a work of art the book is. Uh, from the calligraphy on the cover, the front cover, to the picture of Suzuki Roshi on the back cover. Um, and then just the way it's laid out, you know, broken into sections, right practice, right attitude, right understanding. And then each talk with the title and an epigraph uh, so thoughtfully and skillfully put together, thinking of the, the genesis for the book it being a series of talks, a series of question and answers that Suzuki Roshi did with a small sitting group near San Francisco. And the way the editor, Trudy Dixon, put together the comments and, cr and shaped it into a book and then give each talk a title and pulled out of it an epigraph. Beginner's mind. Uh, in the beginner's mind, there are many possibilities. But in the expert mind, there's few. And, and how this book so wonderfully uh, captures the timeless wisdom of Suzuki Roshi. Deceptively straightforward and simple, and at the very same time, timeless, profound, and creating a magic that no matter how many times you read this book, somehow there's always a new discovery, there's always a new teaching, a new insight. Uh, and how put together these different elements in this book, um, they, they capture this art of being, this simple, straightforward, timeless, profound being that is beginner's mind. Yeah. And this book, f written 50 years ago, having its relevance now in this great time of turmoil, the pandemic, the growing awareness of racial injustice, the divisiveness uh, of our political system and, and an economic downturn and each of us with our own challenges. And this 50-year-old teaching still as relevant and appropriate now as it, is, as it was when it was written, you know, still offering up that spacious presence, you know, the curious way in which we innately have the capacity to experience the moment. And when we do, the, the clutter of our usual dramas and narratives opens. And in that spacious opening, possibility of being alive becomes palpable, becomes more evident. Uh, and how wonderfully 
Suzuki Roshi captures that notion and expresses it in so many exquisite ways. What I'd like to do is just start at the start of the book uh, many years ago. I think 73 or 74, I was in Wat Bawan in Bangkok, Thailand. And the monk who was in the hut, living in the hut next to me, gave me this book saying, you might want to read this. I opened it. I read the first six pages, the first six pages about practice from 25 to 31. Then I closed the book and I thought, it's going to take me a while to absorb those teachings in those first six pages. All these years later, from 73 to 2020, and still I'm thinking and feeling, it's going to take me a while to absorb and realize those teachings. Yeah. Many possibilities. Uh, isn't every day like that? Isn't that what prompted young men to say, every day's a good day? Isn't that the incredible unfolding of our existence each time we sit down and be zazen? Who could predict uh, what exactly they were going to think and feel and remember and anticipate in a single period of zazen? As Dogen Zenji said, even if all the Buddhas, as many as the grains of sand in the river Ganges, with all their Buddha wisdom, tried to decipher one person's zazen, they couldn't do it. This boundless nature of being that we all are. In how Suzuki Roshi presented that. In the hippie area of the Bay Area. Um, right practice. Zazen practice is the direct expression of our true nature. Strictly speaking, for a human being, there is no other practice than this practice. There is no other way of life than this way of life. Um, how many of us? I suspect all of us have had moments of aliveness, moments when the authority of being asserted itself. and instructed us in a way beyond our understanding that comes with our rational mind. In uh, how this practice that many of us call Zen is at its essence formless. It has no fixed form, and that's what allows it to take on the infinite possibility of all forms. But every life is a path. Every being in search for aliveness from a cellular level to however their culture and their upbringing has inspired them to engage it, this search for being. Uh, 
This is what zazen is. To sit in the midst of that. And to not let the um, preoccupations, the struggles, the contractions of our conditioned existence inhibit it. But to let it blossom. Posture. These forms are not the means of obtaining the right state of mind. To take this posture is itself to have the right state of mind. This is not to obtain something special, some special state of mind. Uh, And yet, this human body, that each of us has our own version of, um, has encoded within it the intensities of being alive. In particular, the ways we've tightened, contracted, and then this posture that asks us to discover, to recklessly and courageously take on a posture that reflects and expresses the capacity of what we are. To sit in a stable and settled way, however that might be for you. to let the spine find its uprightness, its backbone rising up through the neck and supporting the consciousness of being. And the front of the body open, resonant with this being. And the face, like Suzuki Roshi's face, giving forth expression to the emotionality of life. Uh, And then, with reckless courage to put our hands in mudra. To take on Buddha being. The thoroughly alive and awake version of human being. One of those infinite possibilities and at the same time, all of those infinite possibilities. And as we take on that posture, um, our karmic being, our conditioned being, the contractions of our being make themselves evident. And in a marvelous, mysterious way, they make themselves evident, and as we attend to them thoroughly, they offer themselves as a Dharma gate beyond conditioned existence. This is the mystery of posture the mystery that we attend to in detail every time we sit down to be zazen. Suzuki Roshi talks from the very beginning of this fascicle 
of how when we cross our legs, they are neither one nor two. They are cross-legged sitting. They are both one and two. And this whole body has within it a particularity and a non-duality. All this in the posture of Zazen. Breathing. What we call I is just a swinging door that moves <clears throat> when we inhale and when we exhale. Ah, how sensitive the breath is, reflecting the, the workings of our being. when we invite the breath to flow like a swinging door, swinging in with the inhale, swinging out with the exhale. We discover how air becomes breath and breath becomes air. We discover how each breath is a journey with four phases, the inhale, the pause, the exhale, the pause. The inhale has its own characteristics. Allow, open, receive. And let that openness, that receiving, go thoroughly deep into the body of being. Let it touch the very bottom of being. And pause and let there be exhale. Everything flows. To let it go with the exhale. And then pause. And then renew with the next inhale this great cycle of existence. And how we engage this great cycle of the breath, the inhale and the exhale in Zazen. To not relate to it with some determined concentration. And at the same time, to not take it for granted involving ourselves in the intrigues of our mind. But to let the simplicity of breath reveal the vehicle of awareness as it flows in and it flows out. To let it be, along with the body, the foundation of presence that spacious, timeless being out of which each moment arises. Sometimes letting everything that arises be breathed. That we breathe the sounds, that we breathe the physical sensations, that we breathe the thoughts, for they are part of us.
control. To give your sheep or cow a large spacious meadow is the way to control him. Within Zazen, there is boundless permission to be, and there is precision and precision to be the experience that's being experienced. These two together, they they teach us the effort involved, the engagement involved in Zazen. Shakyamuni likened it to tuning a musical stringed instrument, neither too tight nor too slack, but just right, and the music occurs. Uh, so as we let the breath breathe in and let the breath breathe out, it teaches us this balance between boundless permission to be and the precision of attention in following the breath. And we discover something about letting life be, letting the thought be, letting the sound be, letting what's seen and heard and tasted and touched, letting it be, letting the world be. So be it. This is how it is. In out of this being, um, the world arises on its terms, not ours. Original mind starts to be experienced. and the dramas and intrigues of our conditioned mind start to be just themselves, this momentary occurrence, this momentary psychological importance, this feeling expressing our emotional response to the details of our life. Mind waves. Uh, because we all enjoy, we in, because we enjoy all aspects of life as the unfolding of big mind, we do not care for excessive joy. So we have imperturbable posture. Um, excessive joy. That somehow we become excited by the notion we're getting what we want. Which is inevitably interwoven with the despair of not getting what we want. Shakyamuni taught the middle way. Know. In Zen, we call it ordinary mind. Yes, this is enjoyable this experience, this moment, this pleasantness, 
this sukha, enjoying the body, this pity, enjoying the mind. And there will be times of unpleasantness you know, that will ripple through us with their version of consequence. Uh, this is the conditioned nature of being. Um, and as they are related to with this simple presence, uh, they're allowed to be themselves, pleasant and unpleasant, stirring us with joy or sadness, yeah. with inhale and exhale. As Suzuki Roshi said, when he was telling his students that he had terminal cancer. Saying, I will suffer, but that's okay. I will be suffering Buddha. That will be the nature of that experience. This courage to live the life we're living, to be what we are, and to keep entering the next moment, the next experience, not as simply a projection of what we have determined is reality, not as simply the imputation of what my mind uh, considers to be reality. But something of Shoshin, beginner's mind, this courageous entering into what is, and letting it be the teacher. When the world comes forth and informs and forms the self, Dogen Zenji says, this is awakening. This is the activity of Zazen. And everything that comes forth is the Dharma teaching. As we open to it, as we experience the workings of the self, the path unfolds. We see more clearly what it is to be the person we are. We see the patterns of our thinking and feeling. We see the holdings of our body. We see the opportunity and the path of liberation. You should rather be, you should be rather grateful for the weeds you have in your mind because eventually they will enrich your practice. Asking us to have a great patience with the person we are. No. Patience has a kind of progression to it. First of all, to make contact. To see the way we get too excited, too resistant, 
the way we contract or grasp. And then be willing to turn towards it and experience it. Not in terms of what we want and what we don't want, but in terms of just how it is. Sometimes it has the quality of just being willing to let it happen. And as we do that, it educates us with the forbearance, the patience, the perseverance that the unfolding of our karmic life asks of us. And in that forbearance, we, we, we see the struggling that happens in a human life. We see the path beyond it, and we have a compassionate patience for it within ourselves and within everyone else. We see that in this web of interbeing, this is what is asked of us. You know? That in this time of turmoil, And in the history of human life, there's been many times of turmoil. Maybe we think, well, in this period of time, after a few months or whatever, there will be a vaccine. And then we'll be able to return to normal. There'll be an election, and then we'll be able to return to normal. Um, the path of liberation is not granted to us through enduring this and somehow um, waiting until what it is we prefer arises. The path of liberation asks us to sit, to be in the middle of this. And in sitting and being in the middle of this, enact the path of liberation. To let each inhale happen as a liberative involvement in being. To let it inform us in a way that creates a deep acceptance. Let it inform us in a way that creates an inclusion of all that arises in Zazen. Yeah. Yeah, when I lift up this book, I think I think of a Zen priest from a rural part of Japan arriving in San Francisco in the middle of the hippie era of the hate Ashbury. How did he do it? How did he, in 12 years, make a seemingly indelible mark on the history of Zen in America. How did he go to that small sitting group? I think it was Palo Alto. On Tuesday mornings and after sitting casually, informally, with his irrepressible smile, answer and respond to the questions.
How did this come into being? With its capacity to create its own kaya, its own realm of being, its own spaciousness. That when you reach the page with the picture of the fly, it's, it's obvious to you that it's speaking of the suchness of being. That all things preach the Dharma. And the teaching that it's wisdom that sees wisdom. So many of us have experienced that resonance in reading this book. How is it that we sit that enables that? What is the disposition of body, of breath, of mind that enables that, that realizes it, that expresses it? It's the Genjo Khan, the Khan of life, the obvious mystery of being alive. It's the challenge each time we sit down to be Zazen. It's the challenge when we notice and acknowledge what's going on in our mind and heart, in our thoughts and feelings. It's the challenge when we see our own impulsive reactiveness and along with it the request for a more spacious and compassionate way of being. All of this arrives in the moment of zazen. All of this is met with beginner's mind. That beginner's mind that doesn't know what should happen or should not happen. That beginner's mind that can open this magical book and say wordlessly, thoughtlessly, yes. So, now we'll end the talk with the sitting. Now that we've talked about it, let's do it. The Zen way of Suzuki Roshi is not a theory, it's a practice, it's a doing, it's a being. 